I just cut this box open. Then I realized I should probably unbox this on camera. Okay, box is open. <laughs> That's right. You might remember this dude, the open pore sucker out of silicone with the master wood carving. Jason has designed the aluminum version two part open pour, two piece open pour. Aluminum, sucker, belly pour. You pour from the belly. The top color is the first color and you go from there. When it comes to a two piece aluminum open pour bait, this is, uh, this is out there. This is different. There might be a belly pour two piece open pour mold that exists out there, but I've never heard of it. Not that I've heard of all of them, but first time I'm seeing it, aluminum belly pour two part. Things are getting good over at Epic, dude. This is some insane bait design. The geometry of that cavity right there, it is complicated. Jason just knows how to do this stuff though. He already sent me action video of this too. That's how you know you're watching YouTube right here. I'm showing you a video on my phone on camera of the action of this bait. You probably didn't see much, but it's good. Let's pour some. I'm gonna be pouring it in a dead-on plastics craw tube blend, a relatively stiff plastic. What a mold, man. Let's go pour some baits. I did some experimenting. The other one does not look nearly as good. We'll get we'll get into this later. This one looks nice and clean. We'll see though. This is this is just a, this is just a three color laminate. Flicking them wing nuts. You get real good at flicking wing nuts when you're pouring baits like this. Woo, this mold's still hot. Whoa. Oh, you wanna see the tail shape? Standard paddle tail. That's one thing with aluminum two-piece molds. You can't, unless you have a fourth axis machine, you can't come in from certain angles and carve details. Sometimes you're just stuck with a flat paddle, but who's to say Epic Bait molds won't have a fourth axis machine someday? Slot in the top sticking out right there. That's where the hook comes out of. There's no slot in the belly because it's belly pour. You just put your hook right in there, you eyeball it, and have the point come out that slot. That really helps to have a uh, somewhere for it to come out of. That is spectacular. That is clean. That is also very similar. This is a soft plastic sucker from the silicone mold, just like the Woodmaster. Look at that. This looks more clean because this was hand carved and there's little imperfections everywhere. Some people like that style, of course, but this is just no human error. Just a perfect sucker. Let's make some fancy ones. That's a very natural color I just did there. Let's go for fancy. But before the fancy, I almost forgot. Let's look at this one. This one's going to look a little funky. I cooled it off as fast as I could also with copper plates and I stacked aluminum molds up and stuff. I wanted to see how severe I could make the cavity, like how bad it gets. Not too bad, actually. Not a ton of shrinkage really. But that excessive heat I applied to this just to see how hot I could get the mold with things being okay. Blended all those colors and left it with a white tail, which is a totally acceptable color in my opinion. Yeah, it even fades into the white tail pretty nicely. I mean, it's not really a technique for bait making, but if you wanna overheat your baits and blend all the colors you poured, it seems that makes it look pretty natural. Look at that. It's like a Northern hog sucker look. That's pretty much what we made right there. Northern hog sucker. That's the best fish name in the world. Hot, 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 hot. Ouch, ouch. Woo, that might be a burn. And I'm picking it back up. Ouch. Woo. 
And I have to do that again. This is some painful bait making. Get that out of there. That's cool though, because the flake, look at this. It's like more on the top and it starts getting less and less as it goes up there. That's gonna look cool, I think. Beautiful. That is a hardcore color I just poured. Just a very thin layer of red, and the red comes out of those fins too. And then I'm gonna come back over it with the white and finish it off. Sorry, I forgot to show that, but here it is. Kinda just tied everything in together. Over poured a little bit. I always do that anymore. And then I just pinch the rest off with my thumb against the mold, and it makes a clean line. Oh, well, it's like my wing up too hard. Oh. Okay, okay now. What the heck? That's like a life-changing bait. What in the world? That is so gorgeous. For a bit, I thought that red line on the bottom there was gonna look stupid, but it looks perfect. It's just proportional. It like hit the golden ratio. I don't know, that looks fantastic to me. I'm looking hard for imperfections as well. That back fin's filling up just fine so far. Look at that. See that blue shimmer? on the top color, then that fades into a gold green color shift. Then there's like a lateral line somehow, I don't know how, but it's like there's a lateral line right there. Man, you can make this bait look good, dude. That shell technique's pretty sweet too. That really did it for this bait. That's right. We're making a northern hog sucker. Don't forget your hook slot, fellas. Almost did. I, these might look real good. This might be thumbnail right here. Tweezers. Little piece of piece, piece of something right there. It's feeling confident. Started at the tail. Good quality D mold right here. Whoa. Whoa, bruh. That is, that's a stunner. That just exudes the essence of a northern hog sucker. It's kind of perchy because those bars are really even, but on the real fish, they're like that. I made another one where the spots, well, it is more spots, it's more broken up. I'll show you here. But I kind of strayed away from anatomical accuracy with this one, and I like that better. Purely opinions, but look at that. Even the top's cool. Nothing's cold cracked. Looking spiffy. I have traveled long, long ways. I am very much in the middle of nowhere. It is very quiet out. In the middle of a reservoir. I had these dudes sitting in the passenger seat the whole time, just, I do that a lot. The baits I'm gonna fish with, just right there in the passenger seat. I stare at them the whole drive. Almost causes accidents. Caught a wiper here at this spot two days ago. That's why I'm back. I wanna see if I can get another and if this is a consistent spot for wiper, that'd be cool. Let's just go for one of these right here for a little while. Sorry, you couldn't see. I'm gonna put a jig into one of these, like such as 
That really doesn't look too bad. That's just a big swim bait. And here we are at the ditch. Time to catch big fish. I should know better than doing that, but I just did that. I should have made light casts and made my way out there. We are not off to a good start. 100 pound flathead probably has that thing in its mouth right now. It's like, ooh, what's this? Did want to try one of these on a chatterbait though. This jig's a bit lighter, so it should sink slower and chatter around a lot. Chatter around a lot. <laughs> Got him. Dude, I threw it between those rocks. And the fish came out. I thought I was gonna get a snag. Look at how this fish ate. That's pretty, that's pretty impressive from this little fella. Okay, sorry, I just punched you in the face, dude. It just ate the whole thing. It's official, small river bass, like epic suckers. That's pretty sweet, be free. Even though the fish wasn't that impressive, that was just an impressive catch because I hope you guys saw that. I chucked this thing right in that little dark crevice right there. You can see it probably. And I was like, oh crap, because I'm going to get a snag. And I yanked it out and it came up over and landed back in the water. But I saw a wake come out of that little crevice and then I just set the hook. I didn't feel the bite. I just set the hook and knew the fish was on and boom, that was nice. I even gave you a little story time there. Wow. Little bassy poos. I want the sucker right now. What do you know? I caught a bass. I also wanted to mention this bait probably has the best fall action. Like if you have line out and that line's getting taken by current or blown by the wind or just having to sag on the surface of the water, like it's got this like fall forward because of the fins and off coming off the side action and it's stable and it just kicks and it falls forward and down. It's like the best falling action I've ever seen on a bait. You just know it's being presented perfectly and falling down the edge of the rocks. Yeah, man. Suckers on chatterbaits. That's pretty sweet. Six aught will fit on this. I overnighted myself some eight aught beast hooks. Let's just try to catch a fish the traditional weedless designed beast hook style. But six aughts will fit. This is just designed for eight aught. I would recommend using eight aught. It's a little bit heavier, but it's a lot nicer to fish with. Got him. Okay, this is a good fish. He's tangled. Oh no. I try to let him get it. Get yourself out. There we go. Still tangled. Taking line. Whew. Okay, get out, dude. He's on. Sweet. I felt that stick break, and now I got him. I think this is a better fish. Better fish than the last fish. Yeah, fish do not come off of an eight aught beast hook very easily. Yeah, that's a fantastic river bass right there. Lost my sucker. It's official, fantastic river bass. Like epic suckers, be free. Once again, a bass. I am not capable of catching anything else, only bass. You believe people complain to me even, and they're like, eh, bass are boring. And <laughs> It's like the video is titled Making a Lure and you're complaining to me that bass are boring. There's just a lot of people out there that like to voice their opinion about bass being boring, you know? That was another fantastic, interesting fight. Caught the fish, got tangled, caught it the legit way on just a beast hook. Not that catching it any different way is less legit. I shouldn't have said that, but you know what I mean. This is good stuff. Another day and another set of baits on the passenger seat. Yes, this time I'm bringing the old sucker too. We're gonna try to get a fish on these fellas because we have not yet on video. Let's make it official. And I got my Northern Hog suckers as well. 
When you force yourself to just fish with one bait and just fish till you get fish, it's a very satisfying way of fishing. Oh my gosh, and it's nice and clear water. I can see it kick on the fall. Yeah, it always has a little gang of bluegills behind it, wherever it goes. It's pretty cute. Oh, eat it. Something's got my bait. Was that a turtle? Oh, dang, it's a turtle. I did not set the hook. Woo, came off. Look at where he bit. It was so close to getting to the hook. Top water snappers. <laughs> okay, got a hit. Got him. This is a very, very good fish. I just heard my rod crack. What is this? No, 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 stay out of the rocks. This is a big bass. This is, this is good stuff. Get out of the rocks. But I'm glad there's an ADOT beast hook in it. Dude. But it's official, big bass. It's a six inch lure, you know. Six, 12, a little less than 18 inch bass. Why did it fight? It fought so hard. I thought it was huge. Dang it. Anyway, be free. Dang it, I was ready for a five pounder right there. Oh, I just got him. Oh, that was a wiper. That was a wiper came up up behind it never got a hook into it Woo! that was a bigger fish than what I just caught that was next cast got one they're biting like crazy it's because of the rain what is that get out of there get up here big bass Two giant bass, back to back. Well, if I can't catch anything but bass, at least I'm catching the correct size ones. Oop, dropped him. That was a bit smaller than the first one. I need a new bait. Now's my opportunity to get a good fish on the original sucker. Watch, now I'm not gonna get another bite. They really like the aluminum one a lot better. What is this? I'm out of aluminum ones. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, fellas. Back to back, within three casts, I had three bites and I caught two fish. What a so- look at this. What a solid bait though. A lot of living creatures bit this particular bait right here. That's a snapping turtle scar right there. And then its head is just tenderized with bass teeth. One of those fish that bit, I didn't get a good enough look at it to be certain it was a wiper, but it hit and then I felt and just a freak out like that. So I think, I think a wiper even bit this. Just gnawed on. It's always a pretty sight, you know? I should get some Mend It soft plastic glue, patch it back up and catch three more fish on it or two more. Did I catch three fish with this? Video's over, what am I saying? 150 bucks for a two piece. Six inch, open pour, sucker mold. Little piece of something right there. Flick it right at you. Anyway, just having a product like this that you guys can get, make your own baits. I don't know, there's just story with it. There's, it's just fun. If you're not into so making soft plastics and you have the means to, consider it. It's not cheaper, it's not some sort of economical reason. It's great, catching fish on fancy, 
stuff like that that you made the night before and they attack it like that, that's just very satisfying. There's not a lot of hobbies or things like that where it just all comes into play that way. You design it, you pour it, you go out and fish with it, and then you hit the chances where you catch fish. With, it's just so good. Anyway, video's over for the second time. <laughs> Thank you, Jason and Amanda from Epic Bait Molds for being this awesome. On to the next bait. Oh, I just got him. Oh. This is it. Because of the rain. It's feeling confident. Started at the tail. Okay, now. That's like a life-changing bait. Woo! This is good stuff. Flick it right at you. 